with the troops. She watched a display of abseiling before taking the controls of an armoured personnel carrier. She manoeuvred it cautiously across the parade ground under instruction from a watchful sergeant. Zusammen. In the Royal Hampshire Regiment, of which she has recently become Colonel in Chief. It was to be a very special occasion for both the Princess and the Regiment. Mike Allen joined the International Press Party as the historic royal visit began. The Princess of Wales flew into RAF Gatow Friday lunchtime on board an Andover of the Queen's flight to be greeted by a warm crowd but a distinctly grey, cold and overcast Berlin. However, if the day was dull, the Princess's outfit was anything but. Another one to make the fashion world sit up and take note. A wool suit of shocking pink and black with the customary hat to match. Ignoring the chill in the air and declining an umbrella, she was introduced to some of the city's military and civilian dignitaries by the GOC of Berlin, Major General Gordon Lennox. Then just time to snatch a brief word with the crowd on the tarmac before being whisked away in a Daimler to begin a very busy 24 hours in the city. Her schedule began at the famous Charlottenburg Palace, a meeting with the mayor, a welcoming speech, and then the signing of the city's golden book, a large autograph come visitors book containing a host of world famous names and signed by the princess with a bold, flourishing Diana. Outside, a chanting crowd, many of whom had traveled from West Germany and had waited several hours to see her, were rewarded with a short walkabout in front of the palace as the princess collected the first of many posies that day. The main purpose of the princess's visit, though, was to meet the men and the families of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Hampshire Regiment, a regiment which boasts 10 VCs and battle honours going back some 280 years, but until a couple of months ago without a colonel-in-chief. So how was the princess chosen for the post? Well, there are quite a few regiments in the army that haven't got colonels-in-chief. We were one of them. And uh, most regiments uh, put in really what amounts to a bid for a colonel-in-chief and wait to see what happens. And uh, in the course of time, we hope that the Queen will either take it on herself or nominate someone else to do it for her. And in our case, we came up trumps with the Princess of Wales. And what does it actually mean to be a Colonel-in-Chief of a regiment? Well, it's an, it's an honorary and ceremonial function, really. Um, we hope that Her Royal Highness will visit us often when she has time. Uh, and we would hope uh, perhaps once a year we will see her. But this visit was very much a new experience for the 24-year-old princess. One of her first engagements abroad without Prince Charles by her side and her first real encounter with the complexities of military life. But still, when she arrived to inspect the battalion at the parade square at Wavell Barracks, she looked relaxed and cheerful, still refusing a coat despite the distinct threat of rain. The parade was her first chance to meet some of the men and she made the most of the opportunity by chatting at length to many of the soldiers. The afternoon's formal proceedings were then rounded off by the traditional feu de joie, the joyful volley. And then three rousing cheers for their new Colonel-in-Chief. Then just time to catch her breath in the officer's mess and then back to business with another royal walkabout. Although security around the barracks was very tight, inside things were much more easygoing and low-key with the scheduled 15-minute walkabout turning into nearer 30, as the princess stopped all the way along the route, chatting to soldiers' wives and, of course, the children. <laughs> Meanwhile, her lady-in-waiting was collecting enough posies to open a small florist's. And as the evening grew darker and the flash guns popped, the princess was happy to show off her special gift from the regiment that she was so proudly wearing, a Hampshire's cap badge crafted into a brooch by a leading London jewellers from gold, rubies and emeralds, a present from all the regiment, although its cost was a closely guarded secret. Fifty lucky couples had been invited to meet the princess at a small tea party after the walkabout. So what were some of their impressions of their royal visitor? I thought she would be very shy. You know, that's the impression I had from pictures and what I'd seen on telly. But she was very natural. She knew what to say. She seemed down to it. She? Yeah, she's easy to talk to. She was laughing. Lot, she? Yeah. She's quite happy. Uh, she's very pretty. And uh, she's a lot taller than what you see on the TV, you know. 
and I enjoyed it very much, and she's lovely. The Princess is what the Americans call box office, probably the most photographed woman in the world, and her trip to Berlin was no exception. Day two of her visit began with four truckloads of the world's press being manoeuvred into position in readiness for her look around the barracks, all hoping for that extra special shot that could earn them a fortune. Today, the princess had chosen green, the emerald variety though, rather than the camouflage one, to see some of her soldiers in action. First on the agenda, a look at the regiment's anti-tank weaponry. The Milan proving a big attraction with a look down the site to find out what it was all about even if the explanation afterwards did seem a trifle confusing at times. Then it was on to a demonstration of the men's fighting prowess, as the regiment, nicknamed the Tigers after their time in India in the 1800s, showed off their teeth in a mock battle. In fact, it was to turn out to be a day of surprises all round, both for Diana and the frantic press contingent. It was the princess who got the first one, a red rose carried in the teeth of a soldier who just abseiled from a helicopter in front of her, a gift received with shy but obvious delight. And if that didn't prove that romance is alive and well in the British Army, another gift. This time, all because the lady loves. A box of chocolates hidden under a combat jacket. Then it was the turn of the photographers to be surprised by the princess when she reappeared in yet another outfit, this time much more casual. For the first time in public, dressed in sneakers and a tracksuit. She'd asked the CO over dinner if she could have a go at driving an APC, and of course princess's wishes do come true. So presented with a specially prepared provisional MT permit, she was all ready for her first lesson. As she climbed aboard, the sound of delighted cameramen clicking to their heart's content echoed around the parade square. And Colour Sergeant Chaz Jones began the most important driving lesson of his life, with just 10 minutes to teach the princess what would normally be spread out over three weeks. A tentative lurch forward and she was off. Well, for a moment anyway. But very soon she was throwing the 15 tons around like an old hand at one stage heading for the press stand at a speed that had us all a wee bit worried. The idea was to manoeuvre the vehicle between four bollards, a tricky operation. But with a helping hand and a word of encouragement, she just about managed it. Then, having mastered the art of going forward, it was time for a wrench at the gear stick to have a go at reversing. Mission accomplished with not a hair out of place, the princess emerged from the APC to a spontaneous round of applause from the ecstatic cameraman. So as the princess headed for Gatow and home to another hectic round of public appearances, how did the Hampshire's commanding officer reckon the visit had gone? Well, the visit has been a great success. It's been a, a memorable period for us for so many reasons, but yes, it's been a tremendous success and we've all thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you.